He had been pacing back and forth all night. So many hours spent walking to and fro in his quarters that his feet were starting to develop painful blisters. Yet Jace couldn't bring himself to stay still after his unsettling discovery. Over the course of the night, it had driven him almost mad. But it wasn't just the fear of the inevitable calamity he had learned of that was keeping him up and worrying him into a state of near insanity. It was the lie, the smokescreen that had been used to cover up the truth. And it came all the way from the top. Jace Jacoby had been working as a researcher within the SCP Foundation for the better part of a decade. Sure, it wasn't an easy job at the best of times. In fact, it could be dirty, dangerous, and even downright deadly work. But Jace had learned to take comfort in the bigger picture, and it cultivated in him a loyalty for the Foundation and what they stood for. The reassuring knowledge that he was playing but one small part in protecting the world from anomalous threats usually helped him sleep a little easier at night. This was not one of those nights. Completely by accident, the researcher had learned of a terrible truth. He'd seen a lot of horrible things while working at the Foundation, from one horrific, endlessly regenerating omnicidal reptile to a monstrous creature comprised primarily of giant teeth protruding from its body. But what he had uncovered in the depths of the SCP Foundation's own archive terrified him for a whole different reason. Because it seemed to undo every good thing Jace and all the other personnel had done in the name of the Foundation. He believed that they were the good guys, that their efforts were to prevent total global destruction. Instead, it turned out that they were just pawns. Being familiar with a whole filing cabinet's worth of special containment procedures for various anomalies, Jace was familiar with the term 220 Calabasas. He'd even almost been considered to receive high enough security clearance to be given the full details as to what it entailed. He was aware already that it was the name given to a process that was required to be performed by Foundation staff as a way to keep SCP-2317 actively contained. SCP-2317 was a wooden door leading to another dimension, or at least, it appeared to be. After accessing some restricted files, a suppressed secondary level of information hidden underneath the SCP-2317 entry, Jace discovered what was really going on. SCP-2317 was, in part, a door to another world, as its nickname suggested. But that wasn't the whole story. Beyond the door lay a barren salt plain, the only structures visible for miles being seven identical stone pillars, with ancient symbols carved into their surface. Frequently, a small group of Foundation personnel and security staff would be sent into SCP-2317, each one of them given a specific role to undertake as they performed 220 Calabasas. That process required for active containment was more like an occult ritual, involving holy water, an obsidian-edged knife, chants that invoked ancient powerful gods, and a chicken to act as a live sacrifice. If Jace had just learned those specifics of 220 Calabasas, he wouldn't have realized that the ritual was actually a phony, even a pretty convincing one at that. Buried beneath the pillars was chained something of unspeakable, unknowable power. It had gone by many names, each invoking a particularly nasty sense of trepidation, the Sire of Tyranny, Kural Irbrav, or simply the Devourer of Worlds. The 220 Calabasas ritual was supposedly a way to keep the beast locked below, to strengthen the seven chains each latching the ancient monstrosity to the pillars above. Except it didn't. It was a smokescreen. The ritual did nothing to keep the shackles of the Devourer intact. There was but one chain remaining, one more tether keeping the ancient beast caged. And over the years, no matter how many times the Foundation performed 220 Calabasas, it was eroding, getting weaker and weaker. It was inevitable. The Devourer of Worlds would one day be free. And yet, that wasn't even the worst part about what Jace had uncovered. What could possibly be worse than learning an eldritch deity intent on unfurling doom couldn't be contained with the one method the Foundation had? Well, it was that the Foundation knew, and had known for a long time that 220 Calabasas was nothing more than a charade, with all the effectiveness of a band-aid over a broken leg. As if that wasn't bad enough, Jace had traced the source of this cover-up right to the very top, to the highest operational level within the SCP Foundation's hierarchy. The O5 Council was responsible. 
They had known for a long, long time about the ineffectiveness of 220 Calabasas, and yet hadn't pursued any more permanent solutions to the looming threat posed by SCP-2317 and the Devourer. After a sleepless night, Jace could hold it in no longer. He had to tread carefully, given how far up the chain this conspiracy went. It was hard to know who to trust. Something had to be done, that much was clear to him. Whether that involved sealing or outright destroying SCP-2317. But if those tasked with overseeing the entire Foundation were in on this cover-up, then Jace had to be extremely careful about who he went to for help. There was only one person he was certain he could rely on and share his findings with in secrecy. Senior researcher Alice had long been a good friend of Jace's. In fact, he'd even go so far as to say Alice was his only real friend within the Foundation. The more experienced member of personnel had practically mentored Jacoby from his earliest days as an SCP researcher. Alice had helped him get to grips with certain difficult containment procedures, and even taken the fall for Jace after some of his early mistakes nearly caused a containment breach. Researcher Alice's seniority meant he only got away with a metaphorical slap on the wrist. But most crucially for Jace right now, Ellis wasn't a high enough rank to be even close to any of the upper echelon foundation doctors, like Dr. Bright or Dr. Gears. Nor was he senior enough to have any direct dealings with the O5 Council. If there was anyone working at the foundation that Jace could possibly confide in about his findings regarding the truth behind SCP-2317 and 220 Calabasas, it was Alice. And maybe between them, the pair could put their heads together and avert the catastrophe of the Devourer's inevitable escape. Jace was nervously pacing back and forth while Ellis's eyes were glued to the terminal in his quarters. He had shown him a saved copy of the full archive entry on SCP-2317, detailing everything. Not just the steps required to perform 220 Calabasas, but the additional information about the ritual not working and that the O5 Council knew it. After a long, painful wait for researcher Ellis to scan through the entire file, he leaned back from the terminal screen and sighed. Well, this is hardly ideal, he stated matter-of-factly. Hardly ideal? Jace echoed, his fear of what all this meant manifesting itself as a frustrated outburst. I think you might be underestimating it a little there, Ellis. This isn't just some mild inconvenience we've now got to live with. We're talking about the end of the world as we know it, XK class. And on top of that, the Council knows it's coming and are doing nothing about it. Instead, they're making these high-clearance personnel go and pointlessly slaughter chickens and recite meaningless prayers about seven seals, seven rings, seven thrones for the Scarlet King! Jacoby, calm down, Ellis replied sternly. Let's talk about this rationally. For all we know, this file here could be a part of SCP-2317's containment procedures. That's what I'm saying. The procedure is ineffective, he argued. Let me finish. The senior researcher responded calmly. We know of dozens of other anomalies that employ infohazardous or mimetic effects, and sometimes it's not uncommon for entities of such nature with capabilities to infect information itself to be combated via the use of deliberate, necessary, misinformation. This file might not even be an accurate description of SCP-2317. It could easily be a method for containing something else. No, that doesn't... Jace paused, holding his forehead. Sorry, all of this is giving me a headache. Could I trouble you for some water? Of course, Ellis answered. He got up from his seat and filled a plastic cup from a cooler in his quarters. While his back was turned, Jacoby didn't see Ellis slip something into the water. Thanks, Ellis, Jace said as he gulped down the whole cup. Like I was saying, that theory of it being a mimetic threat doesn't make sense. You've seen SCP-2317 from a distance. We both have. It's a physical, dimensional gateway. I mean... A door to another world is literally its code name, for God's sake. Why would there be a real door with an intangible info hazard behind it? Ellis stroked his chin, pondering quietly. For a moment, Jace's vision seemed to get a little blurry, but he blinked it away. Okay, so if we take everything in the SCP-2317 file as gospel, then answer me this. What do you propose we do about it? His mentor asked. We have to think radically. Together, I think you and I need to come up with an alternate, permanent solution to the impending threat posed by SCP-2317. Then we present it to the O5 Council, storm into their chamber if necessary, and demand them to implement it. The next 220 Calabasas is scheduled for a few hours from now. We need to bring them something that will actually work, not just that performative pantomime they put on as a smokescreen. Otherwise, Alice... Uh, Jace paused for a moment. 
hearing his own voice crack with despair. If we don't, the Devourer is going to destroy everything. You said the words permanent solution. Elaborate for me, please. Ellis responded. Look, I think we have only two options, the frightened researcher said. Jace noticed he was starting to feel drowsy, lightheaded even, needing to shake himself to stay upright and conscious. We either find a way to seal SCP-2317, or we destroy the door to another world outright. The 220 Calabasas procedure? That, no, rit, rit, ritu, ritual. They take a one kiloton nuke in, with them in case of containment failure, right? We detonate one of those inside the dimension, pray that it kills the devour, devour worlds. Then we shut the door and blow, blow that up behind his two. Suddenly, Jace's legs gave out underneath him like they couldn't support his body weight anymore. He landed on the floor with a thud, while Ellis loomed over him with a sympathetic look on his lined face. He... he drug... me? Jace barely managed to get the question out. I'm sorry, Jacoby. Ellis sighed. Believe me when I say I would have preferred to talk you out of these seditious thoughts. The duty to the Foundation comes first. You understand. The door opened. The heavy clomping of boots against the floor. Jace could barely turn to see the squad of security guards entering the room. They lifted his body up off the ground, getting limper by the second, and began dragging him out by his arms. With all his waning strength, he kicked and thrashed his legs as they trailed beneath him. Being taken away by the guards, Jace yelled for his mentor's help. He kept trying until his voice became slurred, imperceptible sounds, not even words anymore. The world around him started sinking into darkness as whatever he'd been dosed with took full effect. As Jace was hauled off struggling, not once did Ellis dare to look him in the eye. Jace had no idea how much time had passed, only that he'd been chemically knocked unconscious for most of it. Opening his heavy eyelids, he had no idea where he was. The room around him was in pitch darkness. For a second, he'd wondered if he'd been executed by the Foundation and was currently dead, his consciousness trapped in an endless inky void. Then another concerning thought pushed its way into his head. Had they thrown him into the Devourer of Worlds prison? It was a cruel, callous move, even for the SCP Foundation, to offer Jace up as a sacrifice for daring to look further into the truth behind SCP-2317. A column of light cut through the dark from somewhere above him, gleaming down so bright that it was hard to look directly at it. The spotlight did little to illuminate the rest of the room, although squinting in the dark, the researcher could detect the outlines of several figures sat in a circle facing him. Thirteen of them, to be exact, with one extra taking their seat. He was just awake enough to remember a crucial detail that explained where he was. There were thirteen members of the O5 Council, along with one administrator. Hello again, researcher Jacoby, came a voice from one of the seats encircling him. Tell us, do you know why you're here? You... Jay stuttered before his fear once again erupted in an explosive outburst. You all knew about SCP-2317. You had us perform 220 Calabasas time and time again, knowing that it was doing nothing to keep the Devourer contained. If that creature gets loose, no, when it does, it will destroy everything and everyone. The Foundation is meant to contain anomalies, not pretend to. We have a duty to every adult child on this planet to protect them from this entity. Do not exposit the Foundation's mandates to us, Jacobi. Another of the Council members' voices replied, sounding not in the least bit concerned. If anything, they sounded bored. The SCP Foundation acts in accordance with what the Council dictates, not by whatever moral framework you have chosen to impose on this organization. But the Devourer of Worlds is coming, Jace pleaded. You all know as much! I I've seen it in the SCP-2317 file! Inevitable! You used that exact word! We are aware of the threat faced by SCP-2317-K, or the Devourer as you called it, a third council member interjected. But rest assured, at the time 220 Calabasas was established to provide an illusion of containment. We calculated it would take several decades for the final chain holding the creature to give way. That time might have already elapsed, the researcher argued. And in the meantime, we have no countermeasures prepared, no strategy, and the rest of the personnel have no idea that this threat is coming. <laughs> Almost exactly the same wording as last time, one council member said, not addressing the rest directly, but still just audible enough for Jace to detect it. What do you mean, last time? Yes, thinking back a few short moments to the beginning of this exchange. Wait, wh why did you say hello again when I woke up here? 
There was a horrible, nauseating silence throughout the room for a moment. Jace had already worked out the answer. Why would the council bother telling him the truth now? I've figured this out before, haven't I? He said. A handful of times? One of the voices replied. If not you, then another member of personnel. Every now and then someone snoops, uncovers something they shouldn't, and you make them forget it. Jace finishes their sentence for them. Before we apply the amnestics, the voice said, observe, today's 220 Calabasis procedure is already underway. A huge curved screen blinked to life. It filled half the circumference of the room, but wasn't enough to give Jace any clearer of a look at the O5 Council. Each one of them was cast as shadowy, silhouetted figures against the images now appearing on the screen. It was footage being streamed live from one of the personnel cleared to enter as CP-2317. They were already in the middle of performing the phony ritual, spritzing holy water over the seven pillars, unaware that one of them was still linked to a chain keeping the devourer imprisoned below. Suddenly, there was a rumbling, a shaking reverberating through the ground on the video feed like an earthquake or something moving underneath. Oh my god, Jace breathed as he watched in horror. It's happening! The devourer is coming now! Get them out of there! Some of the O5s mumbled awkwardly to themselves. We shouldn't act with too much haste. It could just be the creature reacting to the ritual, one hypothesized. It's been imprisoned for a lot longer than a lot of us have lived. It's bound to get restless, another concurred. Besides, the security team are armed with a nuclear device in case the worst should happen. On the screen, the tremors were continuing. The personnel member in charge of applying the holy water dropped the silver aspergillum and asporium containing it, spilling its contents over the salted earth below. Without any further warning, the ground started to crumble in the feed, an enormous clawed hand bursting up from underground. It was followed by the hulking shape of something much larger breaking through the salt plain, sending a tidal wave towards the personnel member whose body cam footage was being displayed. The feed cut out, and the room was dark once again. It's too late. Jay stared at the council in a mix of terror and disgust. You did nothing and now it's too late! Before any of them could reply, another tremor rang out. This time beneath Jace's own feet, the Devourer of Worlds was here. It was bursting through the wooden door of SCP-2317 and tearing the Foundation facility apart with its immense size as it emerged. The walls cracked, the entire building beginning to crumble around him and the O5 Council, who were all hurriedly exiting the chamber to whatever plans or bunkers they had to ensure their own personal survival. Suddenly, the huge weight of something dropped through the dark and collapsed on top of Jace. Standing up amongst the wreckage of the obliterated building, the Devourer of Worlds drew itself up to its full height. It was an impossibly large creature, humanoid and obese. Its entire body was covered head to toe in thick, armored scales, with horns atop its jawless head. From one of them hung the final chain, a withered shackle no longer keeping the monster held within its underground prison. The seven chains had all failed. The ritual, 220 Calabasas, had failed. In fact, it never worked in the first place. Far below, his arms pinned painfully under a heavy slab of concrete, Jay stared up at the towering form of the Devourer. He had felt scared as the building came down around him, and even now, there was a lingering fear of his own death. But there was something else there, too. A sense of feeling oddly relieved. Not necessarily glad to be right about the impending doom, or even pleased to know this ancient trap deity was about to destroy the whole planet, but at least the Devourer of Worlds was honest, he thought. There was no subterfuge, no rituals acting as a smokescreen, no more lies. Just an honest simplicity of a creature whose only goal was to bring an end to everything. As Jace watched, the Devourer raised its hands up, reaching the highest pinnacle of the sky, then brought them straight back down to Earth. It plunged both deep into the skin of the world, deep enough to crack the very surface open. Mantle and magma were spewing everywhere, like blood from the gaping wounds it left in the planet. Jace Jacoby closed his eyes, as the ground beneath where he lay trapped ripped open, plummeting him into the dark. Now go check out SCP-2317 The Devourer of Worlds, A Door to Another World, and SCP-2440 The Sealed King for more eldritch horrors that will destroy your mind.